Hey, Jason from Bohemia Bees, and on this episode, we're going to talk about swarm traps and catching those swarms to grow your apiary. Stay tuned, and you don't want to miss this one. Okay, so a swarm trap. We have a prior video, and I'll put a link in the description below that'll talk about swarm traps and talk about you know, why we use them, how you set them up. We're not gonna spend too much time on that because in this episode, we're gonna go over, one, our new swarm trap that we carry here at Bohemia Apiary, and we're gonna talk about how to set it up, and then we're gonna have a little healthy competition, so you wanna stay to the end of the video to watch how we set this up and how it turns out. So let's start with the swarm trap. This is a standard size box that we um, that we have sell here at Bohemia Apiary. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to purchase one. Unfortunately, we do not ship these. These are too big to ship. The shipping tends to be a lot more than what the cost of the product is, and we don't like to do that. So if you're local to me on the Eastern Shore of Maryland, you can stop by and pick up as many as you want. Uh, these are Amish made quality. Um, we have, uh, it's built and also dipped in, in wax. So the whole swarm trap is dipped in wax. We had some prior swarm traps um, that we sold in the past that people would have to paint. And a lot of people were saying, hey, you know, I wonder if you could dip those or, and, and I wonder if you could not have to, we don't have to worry about repainting them every year. So these, these swarm traps are actually fully dipped. Every part, every uh, piece is dipped uh, with the exception of the components we put on it. We also have a top end area that has a little bit of screen on it and you can even see some of that wax from when it was dipped before. That just gives some airflow for the bees if they're in here, if you have to transport them uh, from where your swarm catch location is back to your apiary and you don't want to overheat them. Uh, naturally, when you close those bees in, they generate a lot of heat in here. So that helps release some of that heat and that transport. It also makes for a very nice place to put a feeder. This is a standard mason jar lid, so standard mason jar size. You put that over there and you can actually feed right on the top temporarily until you get them where they need to go. Remember, a swarm will come with a lot of feed and resources in their bellies. They're ready to start that hive. A lot of times there's not a lot of comb in those locations that they scout out and find. So they're gonna come in and they're gonna actually build comb pretty fast. But with that, that takes a lot more resources. And if they don't know where the local resources are yet, where you transport them to your apiary, well, they're gonna to need to feed them a little bit. So you might use that, you may not use to. We also have the disc dial on the front. The disc dial allows for you to close that off when you transport them to a vented slot. And of course it has the other setting here for a queen excluder, not many people use that. And it has a close function as well. Typically what we do is we leave it open when it's, when it's in swarm mode or catch mode. And then once we catch them, we slide this disc to the uh, to the actual vented to allow the airflow, and it keeps the bees sort of you know calm in there and doesn't let them get out while you're transporting them home. You'll notice when I went past the open hole though, this is about a one and a half inch hole. It's a little bit bigger than a traditional disc that you may buy online. These are much wider, so it gives the bees that open cavity they need to. But it's also big enough for birds to get in. So we put this mesh screen. This is a wire mesh, quarter inch mesh screen. We staple that behind the box so that the birds can't nest in there, but the bees can get through it and go inside the box. When you set up your hive, you take your lid off and you put old drawn comb. This is old drawn comb. It has a wonderful smell, propolis and, and various beeswax. Uh, bees are attracted just by this. Just by putting the old comb out, they're gonna to wanna to come check it out. They're gonna to wanna to see what's going on there because other bees have left pheromones and that wax and that propolis that's on here will attract other colonies and other scout bees to come in and check out the cavity. You'll notice when I put this frame in, it doesn't go all the way down, it stops halfway. That also allows you to put a couple frames in here for them to move into, but then gives a bigger cavity in the bottom for those scout bees to say, hey, that's a big cavity. That's a big place we wanna move into. Uh, you know, imagine when you're in a hive that's really completely packed with bees, and that's what creates that triggering of a swarm, right? They don't have enough room to expand, right? So when they're more than 80% of a, of a box and more than 50% on the frames, you know, that's a lot of space that really needs to be, um, to, to be cut down on. So they're going to swarm. They're going to create a swarm cell at the bottom of the frame, typically. Uh, you would see on most of your hives that might have swarms that you haven't managed or haven't really given them enough space. And then eventually over the next you know nine to ten days or next seven to ten days they're going to swarm out right around the time when it's about ready for that new virgin queen to emerge out um, that that existing queen along with more than half the colony will swarm out in a flurry 
and they'll look for a cavity beforehand. So there's scout bees that are sent out days before, and you want the scout bees to be attracted to this. So they can go back to the colony, they can tell the rest of the bees, hey, I found a new home, new location, let's get moving. Uh, Set so this we're up, we're putting some drone chrome in there, we're putting uh, some new uh, beetle, beetle free or uh, bee, beetle anti beetle frames, uh, small beetle frames. These are the ones from Saracel that we've got. Uh, we don't have a limited supply of these, we're trying to get a lot more of them, we're testing them out this year, but this is heavy wax. And instead of having to open cavities for the small hive beetles to nest in, it has a hexagonal shape where the bees will fill in with honey or pollen or something like that. So we're going to put that old comb in here and we're going to checkerboard some draw, undrawn frames. And the reason we do that is so that the bees with coming with their bellies full will draw those frames out. We're going to set this box up and then we're going to bait it. Uh, the way we bait a hive, typically we put a little bit at the entrance to attract those scout bees, and we put a couple drops on, under the lid or on top of the frames for them to uh, kind of be pulled into that box. Once they're in the box and they see the size of the cavity, smell the old frames, they're going to go back and say, this is an ideal location for us to move into. And that's all you really need. You don't need to put a lot of bait in there. You just need to put enough in there to attract those scout bees and have them go back uh, with a positive experience to the colony and report back. So... There's our swarm trap. We're gonna hang this on a, on, a, on a post in our apiary or near our apiary or on a tree line, somewhere where there's a, a, a thoroughfare of bees that would be coming through. A lot of times power lines, uh, edge of tree lines are great places to hang the swarm trap. You don't wanna put it on the ground. You kinda of wanna hang it at least four, five, six feet in the air. A little bit taller if you can. Some people don't have the ability to have a height to hang it higher. So we're gonna hang it you know, probably five to six feet up in the air. Uh, the boxes come with this hook on the back, so it can easily be hooked, put on a nail, and then screwed in the bottom to secure it against it. It also comes with a gap here on the side to put a ratchet strap if you're going around a tree. You can secure it that way. So these are our swarm traps, but this video wouldn't be that exciting if I just talked about the swarm traps again. Would it? No, of course not. So I have two swarm traps set up. exactly the same. These are the wax tip style, have the checkerboard frames in, like you see. Okay, boom, you can see these two hives are exactly the same, with the exception of the logos we put on the front. We've got little logo and big logo. We're going to bait these uh, swarm traps with two different lures. Uh, I'm not going to say what the lures are because I don't want to have any bias. But I want you to just take a guess, take a random guess, and put in the comments below lore A or lore B or big logo over here or little logo. We're going to install this in and around or near our apiary within a similar distance of each other from all of our colonies. And we're going to see if we catch any swarms. And we're going to see if there's a oh, freaking egg. Three, two. Okay, so we've got both swarm traps set up. We're going to put two different lures in here. I'm gonna put a lore uh, big logo and lore little logo. So big logo and little logo. So what I need you to do in the comments below is I need you to comment what swarm trap is gonna catch the most amount of swarms. We're gonna place these swarm traps, we're gonna bait them, and we're gonna put them near each other in an area where we know there's gonna be bees uh, that potentially could swarm out, especially this time of year as we talked about. Uh, and then we're gonna see how many swarms we catch, if we catch any at all. See if we catch more than one swarm. And if we catch a swarm in one particular one, we'll rebait it and reset it back up just like the original starting point so we can continue to catch more swarms. But let's see which one catches the first swarm and what catches the most swarms. So put your votes below in the comments. Vote what you, one you think is going to catch the first swarm. So put big logo or little logo and first swarm or something like that. And then big logo, little logo and the, the ultimate winner or really the most swarms. So put those in the comments below and we're going to do a contest to see uh, you might win one of our swarm lures that we sell uh, here as well. We have, uh, we have different swarm lures that we have, but we have, uh, we're going to test out two different swarm lures um, and we're going to show you uh, how that result comes about. So let's get these things set up uh, at the location and we're going to see how many swarms we catch. Don't forget to comment below, a like and subscribe so you can follow along so we have progress on this video uh, and we'll see where we end up at the end of the swarm season. Stay tuned everyone, we're going to go put these swarm traps in place. Okay, so we've got our swarm trap set up. We put posts on a fence. We're gonna lift these boxes up high and we're gonna secure them so that the wind won't mess with them. They've both been baited. We have little logo and big logo. Swarm lure 
little logo, swarm lure big logo. Um, and we're going to hang these up and see how many swarms we catch and see which one catches the first swarm. So put your comments below, like we said, um, and we'll see who, uh, who guesses correctly. Uh, we'll tally up the votes and uh, we'll put a poll within our community section. So click on our community section and click on that poll as well. But also comment below in this video so you can uh, kind of tell us. And then we'll do a part one and a part two. Part two being, you know, how many swarms we catch. Maybe removing a swarm and putting it into a box, relocating it. But for part one, we're going to see which one of these boxes catch the most swarms or the first swarm. Stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and uh, give us a comment below on which one you think. And follow back up with us in a, another few days, and we'll see what we uh, catch here in swarm season on the Eastern Shore of Maryland. We're bee beekeeping here at Bohemia Apiary. Well, it's more than a hobby. <laughs> it's sort of an obsession. Thanks for watching, everyone.